It's official. We are already halfway through 2024. And I know it feels like maybe for you guys it's different, but for me, this year has gone by so quick. But nonetheless, the question you have to ask yourself is what have you accomplished so far? Have you made any progress towards the goals that you set for yourself at the beginning of the year? Do you even remember them? Here's the cold hard truth. If you can't point out at least three concrete actions you've taken to accomplish your goals in 2024, I'm sorry to tell you, but you've most likely wasted the first six months of the year. You're already halfway through and making 2024 another year where nothing changes for you. So if you're fine with 2024 being another year wasted in your life, well, then I mean, you can just close off this video right now. You're aware of the consequences of it already. And you know, that's your decision to make now. If you've been working hard, but you just simply can't stand the idea of 2024 being another wasted year in your life, you are the person that I want to talk to today because we're about to reach the point of no return. Really, we're about to reach the tipping point where if you don't start taking action towards your goal now, your year will be gone no matter how hard you try after that. Now, before I get into that, it is extremely important that you understand this. If you've been following me during 2024, you've already lost multiple opportunities this year. And here's why I say that. At the beginning of the year, I ran an event called Time's Up where I taught you exactly how to use your phone to start making money with the attention economy. We have had 16 year olds getting to $2,000 a week just by applying what they learned from that free event. And did you take action on that? No. Then. Last month, I released seven masterclasses, free masterclasses straight out of my $1,195 program, teaching you step by step on how to start an agency from zero with less than $100. And just with that content alone, we had thousands of people messaging me saying that they started their agencies and they got their first paying clients. Did you take action on that? No. And then finally, at the end of last month, I opened up a huge opportunity for a small group of people to join that program and work closely with me and my team. And we've already had dozens of people making 2000, 3000, 5000, $10,000 a month already inside the program. Did you take action on that? No. So the bottom line is this, it could have been you on one of these screenshots getting paid thousands of dollars a month by clients, but you lost those opportunities. And a lot of you messaged me saying that you wanted to join, but you didn't have the money to do so. So today I'm going to show you what you need to do to start making your first thousand dollars a month in 2024. So that way you finally stop missing the opportunities when they present themselves to you and so that you have the money and resources to take full advantage of them, because quite frankly, you can't afford to keep losing opportunities after opportunities. But here's the good news. Starting to make your first few thousand dollars online in 2024 is actually pretty simple. It literally only takes five steps. And in today's video, I'm going to give you a step by step bulletproof plan to do that. And it all starts with step one, which is action based goals. Here's the deal. You have to stop setting result oriented goals because these types of goals more often than not hurt more than they help first because they put that result on a pedestal. And whatever you put on a pedestal in life, you're psychologically telling yourself that you don't deserve to achieve such thing because that's something that is above you. Hence why the expression put on a pedestal. Second, because result based goals are not action oriented. If your goal is to get to $10,000 a month, you have no measurable way to judge if the work you're doing right now is actually moving you towards that goal. And in that case, you just have to resort to judging your progress subjectively just based on feelings. So if you've ever felt like you're putting a lot of effort into achieving your goals, but you never seem to get there, that is why, because you don't have a way to objectively judge your progress. And it feels like you've been putting a lot of effort by watching dozens of hours of content every single week and trying to follow countless different methods, all to no avail. And that leaves you frustrated, wanting to give up, and feeling that this isn't for you. Now, if you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. And all of this frustration and lack of real world results stems from the fact that you keep listening to personal development gurus that keep telling you set your goals, but they never show you how to actually set your goals in a way that you can accomplish them. And then you set result oriented goals. And this hurts you more than it helps you because it sets a destination without providing you a map on how to get there. So What's the solution then? You have to set action based goals instead. Now, what is that? Well, they are actions that have taken consistently every single day. The likelihood of you achieving your result goal becomes much higher. 
Just think about it. If instead of setting your goal to get in shape or put on 10 pounds of muscle in a year, you set your goal to complete 220 weightlifting sessions this year. And for example, have 250 days where I eat more than 3000 calories, which one of them would be easier to execute on and measure your progress? First of all, you can't even measure or judge get in shape. What the fuck does that mean? It's a shitty goal to start with. Now put on 10 pounds of muscle is slightly better because you can measure 10 pounds, but it's still a vague goal because what do you actually need to do in order to put on those 10 pounds of muscle? Now you may say, go to the gym, but how often? Going to the gym once a week is very different than going to the gym six times a week. And that could be the difference in building those 10 pounds of muscle or falling short on that goal. And that is why you must be action oriented here. Because what is the chance of you completing 220 weightlifting sessions in a year and having 250 days where you eat more than 3000 calories and you not putting on muscle? Virtually zero. So with a goal like that, as long as you execute on it, your desired result will become a byproduct of the actions that you're taking. And if you fail to execute on an action based goal, you know exactly where you failed. You know exactly how far away you were from the goal and what you need to improve on in order to get there. And just like that, you have a map to your desired destination. Now, everything I just told you is quite obvious. You know this, you have heard it before and probably more than once. You need to set your goals before you can accomplish them. And if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And yet you still haven't set your goals properly. You see, the reason why you don't succeed in 95% of cases is because you don't do what you know you need to do. So let's just go ahead and stop with the bullshit excuses and set the right goals right now together. This way, by the end of this video, you can have a proper actionable plan to work with for the second half of this year. Now, I'm not here to help you with your fitness goals. You can find someone in the fitness space to help you with that. I am here to help you with your business and financial goals. With your fitness, setting action oriented goals is pretty straightforward because your goals are pretty much always going to be related to diet and training. Now, with business and financial goals, it's a little bit trickier than that. For example, if your goal is to get to $10,000 a month, breaking that down into action oriented goals is not as straightforward. I mean, after all, there are thousands of ways to make $10,000 a month. So here is where we get to the second step of our plan. Step number two is simply figure out how you're going to make money. Ask yourself, how the fuck am I going to make money? And that's actually the most important question you need to answer in order to set your financial goals. And to be honest, if you're watching this video, you probably don't have a concrete answer to this question. So Instead of me trying to answer this for you and tell you that the best way to make money is X or Y or Z or this or that. Instead, let's figure out this answer for your specific situation together. The one thing you're going to need is a skill that can generate you money. And there are thousands of them. It might be designing websites on Wix, building an e-commerce store, creating spreadsheets on Excel, even flipping phones on eBay. Those are all monetizable skills. And there's literally thousands of them. Now, granted, some are better than others. So really, you have to ask yourself, how do you figure out which one to choose for your specific scenario? So let me show you how. And for that, we're going to have to use four parameters. The first one is ease of learning. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. There are countless high paying skills out there. And if you don't currently possess any, you want to get started with something that you can learn easily. So that way you can start making money as quickly as possible. It doesn't matter if something is the highest paying skill. If it requires you to learn a new language like Mandarin, which could literally take you years and years, we want something that pays well, but is also quick to learn or at least learn the basics needed to start getting paid for that skill. Now, our second parameter is perceived value. And the concept here is actually the opposite of the ease of learning one, because it doesn't matter how easy a skill is to learn if no one is willing to pay for that skill or if people are only willing to pay low amounts for that skill. And that's what perceived value is. For example, you can be a master at formatting computers. And there's even people who are going to pay for that. The problem is no one is going to pay top dollar for that. It doesn't create virtually any value for the client. So they're only going to pay low amounts for that. On the other hand, let's say you are a tax advisor who figured out a loophole that allows big companies to save eight figures a year in taxes. In that case, your perceived value to those clients is extremely high. And as a result, you can easily justify a seven figure fee for your services. Basically, the higher the perceived value of a skill, the more you get paid for it. And what we want is to find the best balance between ease of learning and perceived value where a skill pays you well, but it's also easy to learn. Then our third parameter is barrier of entry. Now, this is important because some skills will require you to acquire certain tools or make an initial investment that increases the barrier of entry. 
And if you are a beginner, that is something you want to avoid like the plague. The lower the barrier of entry, the better. The less you have to invest, the higher the likelihood of you not burning through your savings. And finally, our last parameter is personality fit. And this is actually the most important parameter that everyone overlooks. It doesn't matter if a skill has the highest perceived value or is the easiest to learn or has a low barrier of entry, but it is completely opposite to your personality type. If that's the case, you're going to fail with it. And that's why you keep failing with methods that seem to work for everyone else, because it simply doesn't match your personality type. For example, let's say that you can't stand being too long in front of a computer and you love interacting with people. Well, if I tell you that coding is the best skill for you to learn, you're going to fail because it simply doesn't match your personality type. Now, on the other hand, if you struggle with socializing and you prefer to work on logical and analytical tasks, me sitting here and telling you that sales is the best skill for you to learn would be horrible advice. And that's why every time someone gives you a one size fits all solution, you kind of need to take it with a grain of salt. The most important thing you need to understand here is you have to choose something that plays to your strengths rather than your weaknesses. So let's figure out what the ideal skill is for you using these four parameters. If you Google top seven high income skills for 2024, here are the top results that you're going to get. UX designer, copywriter, coding, sales, SEO, e-commerce and blockchain. Now, what I want to do is using the parameters that we discussed, let's fill out this table together. Now, starting with UX design, this is a skill that takes a bit of time to learn. Now, I will say that today it's a lot easier than it was a few years ago due to all of the drag and drop page builders like Wix, Squarespace, Webflow. But it still takes time to get used to with design principles because it's not something that comes naturally to us. So I call it a medium difficulty. Now, the same goes for perceived value. Web pages can be very valuable for businesses, but the same tools I just mentioned made it much easier for businesses to create it themselves. So because of that, its perceived value is not as high as it once was. And the barrier to entry is low for the exact same reason that I mentioned. Finally, this is better fitted for people with more creative and introverted personality types. Now for copywriting, if you don't know what this is, it's basically writing for sales. You're writing things like ads, product pages, email newsletters, etc. Although it takes years to truly master copywriting, learning its basics is actually pretty straightforward. And that's because there are proven copywriting structures that you can follow easily to write simple scripts, which pretty much takes 90% of the guesswork out of the process of writing. And most importantly, opposite to UX design, Copywriting is something that comes naturally to us. And that's basically because copywriting is essentially a chain of logical arguments stuck together. And creating logical arguments is something that we're all trained to do as humans. I mean, that's how we communicate with each other. And more importantly, you've been writing ever since you were young, four, five, six years old. So you already know how to write. All you need to do is learn how to use words in the right order. And that's why we follow the proven structures when we're first getting started. And that's especially true if you used to suck at writing in school. And that is because copywriting is the complete opposite to writing a classical essay. In an essay, you need to sound fancy and complex. But when you're writing copy, you want to sound as simple as possible. And you need to use a fifth grader level of writing. Plus, these days, it's just super easy to correct any grammatical issues or errors with tools like Grammarly. Now, for perceived value, it's it's probably one of the highest perceived value skills. And that's because it's a skill that directly generates sales. It's super easy for a client to track a return on the copy that you write them. And the better that copy is, the more they sell. A simple copywriter can double, triple, or even 10 X the size of a business on his own. The barrier of entry is very low. All you need is a computer and internet access. And when it comes to personality type, most people think this is a creative role. But personally, the best copywriters I come across are always a very analytical and logical types of people. And I think that's basically because they're able to communicate following one logical line of thought without getting dispersed midway through it. I think creative people tend to struggle with that problem more. Now, moving on to coding, I think we can all agree this. It's quite hard to learn. It requires investing a lot of time into it, and it's almost like learning a new language from scratch. Now, when it comes to perceived value, it's also one of the highest valued skills there are today because there is a booming demand for it. Now, I'd say the barrier of entry for it is medium because really anyone can learn how to code, but it does take a lot of effort that most people are not willing to put. The personality types that thrive here are analytical thinkers, usually mostly introverts. Now, sales is an interesting one. Most people think sales is hard and it can be. I mean, if you're selling a $10 million house or a six figure software package, it's probably going to take some good selling skills. Now, 
you don't need to sell that. You don't even need to sell people over the phone or anything. In fact, one of the easiest types of sales there is, is called cart recoveries. Think about e-commerce stores or anyone who sells any type of product online. There's gonna be a lot of people who initiate checkout, but they never quite finish their purchase. Sometimes they have a question or sometimes they simply forget about it during the process. And those are super hot prospects ready to buy. So all you need to do is contact them, see if they have any questions and gently nudge them back to checkout for them to finish their order. And with just that simple touch point, you can increase the revenue of an online business by 30 to 50%. I mean, it's actually insane. And all of this can be done through messages, by the way. And how hard do you think it is to write a few simple messages and answer a couple questions from someone who's already interested in buying? It's about as complex as the work of a cashier. Literally anyone who can send messages can do it. And the great thing is its perceived value is very high. For the exact same reason as copywriting, you can attribute a direct return for this activity and it generates the business revenue that would have been lost otherwise. So it is pure bottom line for them, thus making it a very high perceived value activity. Now, this is the type of skill I'm referring to when I say balance high perceived value and ease to learn. Now, the barrier to entry for this is about as low as it gets. You need a smartphone and an internet connection. And when it comes to personality fit, this works well both for extroverted and introverted personalities. Because although you're talking to someone, you're doing it mostly through messages. So it's fine. The only personality that may struggle with this is the ones who need more of a creative type of work and don't enjoy repetitive tasks. Now, moving on to SEO, this is basically writing articles and blog posts to rank on Google for specific keywords. And the level of writing that you need for that is quite low. And also most of it can be outsourced to AI nowadays. So learning it is pretty easy. Now, the problem is the perceived value for it is quite low. I mean, it's quite similar to what happens with UX design. It used to be high, but since the launch of tools that made it possible for pretty much anyone to do it themselves, its perceived value went down considerably. I mean, it's basic supply and demand. Now, on the other hand, the barrier of entry for it is quite low as well. Now for personality types, it's an interesting one. If you're too analytical, you're probably not gonna like it because it's too simple and you're gonna be writing the same type of articles saying pretty much the same thing over and over. And you're probably gonna get bored because you're gonna feel like you are underutilizing your true capabilities. Now, if you feel like you are a highly above average capable person, I would recommend you going for copywriting instead. It's gonna pay off way better than SEO. And funnily enough, it's the same thing if you're too creative because you won't have too much room for creativity here since you're just gonna to stick to very few specific topics for each article. Now, e-com is another interesting skill. And up until 18 months ago, I'd consider this one pretty difficult to learn. Now, building an e-commerce store is easy. Shopify made that easy many, many years ago. The difficult part is getting sales to your store because before you need to invest in paid traffic and influencers, which is very hard to make work profitably when you're first getting started. But around a year and a half ago, a new way of doing e-commerce started popping up. And that is through viral TikTok products. Because with it, all you need to do really is to create a TikTok account and post a bunch of videos that are already edited by someone else until a few of them start to pop off. And with that, you can get enough traffic to sell a few hundred or even thousands of units every month. And literally anyone is capable of posting videos on TikTok. The only thing you need to learn is how to find the right viral videos and products, which I'm gonna talk about in just a few minutes. Now, when it comes to perceived value, it's high because when you master this skill, you become capable of scaling e-commerce stores to six and even seven figures without having to spend a dime on marketing, which is one of the most in-demand skills today. And the barrier of entry for it is quite low as well. You just need a phone to post from and a TikTok account. And when it comes to personality type, I'd say it works both well for extroverted people and introverted people, but creatives tend to enjoy this one more than analytical people. Although the analytical people thrive when it comes to the metric side of this business, if you're one of them and you can find a business partner that's the opposite personality type, it would be a great combo here. Next, let's talk about blockchain. Although we still don't know where we are in the market with crypto, it's still a skill in high demand. And I believe it's only gonna grow as time goes by when the real use cases of blockchain start going mainstream and getting mass adoption. And this is probably one of the highest paying careers that you could get into looking for the long term. Problem is, it's extremely hard to learn meaning it's not an optimal skill to learn as a beginner because we don't have the proper balance between ease of use and perceived value. The perceived value is high, but so is the difficulty to learn it. We want something with high perceived value and that's easy to learn. Those are non-negotiables. Then it's just a matter of finding out what fits the best for your personality type. Now, just to finish this one off for barrier of entry, this is high, mainly because there aren't many resources out there on how to learn this. So you have to be able to figure out a lot of things on your own. Now for personality type, this is as analytical of a skill set as it gets. All right, now that we finished that, step three is pick your skill. Now that you already understand the top skills, 
You have to actually pick one. Now, before I give you my preferred choice, here's where you need to look at your specific situation. Because if you're already good at one of these skills, you can ignore some of our parameters, especially ease of learning and barrier of entry. So if you're already a good blockchain developer, that's probably one of the best paths for you to follow because it has a high perceived value and a high barrier of entry, which is usually a bad thing. But in this case, it plays in your favor because you already know the skill and the high barrier of entry keeps more people from learning it. So you're going to be jumping into an untapped market. Same if you're already good with coding, for example. That's why I say that there is no one size fits all solution. And it's extremely important for you to take your specific life situation into consideration when evaluating this. Now, I assume that for 99% of people watching this, you're not a master of blockchain development or coding. So in that case, you do need something that's easy to learn because you need to learn this skill from scratch. And the faster you can learn, the faster you'll start making money. So let's take another look at the table we just built together. It's very clear that there are a few winners and they are copywriting, sales and e-commerce, because all of these three skills have an ideal balance between ease of learning, high perceived value, as well as low barrier of entry. And really, you can kind of just pick any of them and you'll be able to succeed. You just need to choose the one that better fits your specific personality. And for that, only you will know the right answer. So pick one now. No need to overthink it. Just go with whatever your gut feeling tells you to go with. Because honestly, you can succeed with any of them. Now, step number four is define success and set your action oriented goals. Now that you have picked the skill that you're going to use to make money, you need to ask yourself, what do you need to do in order to succeed with it? Here, we're going to define what success looks like with the skill and what we need to do in order to get there so that this way we can put together an action oriented goal that you're going to use as your North Star for the next six months in order to achieve your desired result by the end of 2024. So let's start with copywriting. For copywriting, you basically need to write copy for clients. And there's actually a hack to start writing copy for clients that you don't even have all while learning at the same time. I call it the learn as you earn method. And I actually first learned that from Luis, my own CMO and former copywriter for my own agency. And here's how it works. The best way to learn how to write copy is by actually writing copy. Crazy. I know who would have thought. Now, who are you going to write copy to if you don't have any clients when you're first starting out? And here's what you're going to do. You're going to pick 10 to 20 businesses or brands that you would love to work with. And then you just write copy for them as if they're already your clients. We can just refer to them as mock clients. It can be any type of copy emails, ads, landing pages, whatever you want. Just take one copywriting framework and use it to write copy for them. Write it as if they're an actual client of yours paying you to write for them. You can write three, five, 10 pieces of copy for each, however many you want, really. And then as you write those pieces of copy for each one of those 10 to 20 mock clients, you're going to be acquiring real world copy experience because you're actually doing it in practice. You are writing copy and that's how you learn it in the first place. And now you may ask, OK, but how do I actually get paid for doing this? And that's the genius part of this method. What you do is you take these pieces of copy that you've written and you select the best ones for each business and you simply send those copies to them. And all you need to do is just say something simple along the lines of, hey, I love the work that you guys do. I've recently started taking on a few copywriting projects and to practice, I decided to write you a few emails for your brand. So I thought, why not send them to you since I already wrote them anyway? Feel free to send them to your email list or use them on your ads if you like. And this is where the magic is going to happen. What will happen is as you do this, first, you're going to get better and better at it. And second, you're going to start getting positive responses from these messages because you are doing something for them without expecting anything in return. And some of them will like your copy and want to get more of them from you. And then you simply offer to write for them on a retainer. And it's that simple. And with that, you're essentially killing two birds with one stone. You're practicing your craft while reaching out to potential clients. So with that, you can say that the amount of paying clients you get is directly related to the amount of copy that you write and send to these mock clients, which means that for this skill, your action oriented goal should be something along the lines of write X pieces of copy for mock clients. So let's just go ahead and put a real number here. If we're talking about the next six months, you can comfortably write a thousand pieces of copy. That's five pieces of copy a day. If you really dedicate yourself to this, do you think you can write five simple emails a day? Because we both know that you can. And what's the likelihood of you sending your work to 500, 700, or even a thousand different businesses all written using the same proven frameworks that I'm going to give you in a minute. And not a single one of those businesses wants to work with you. It's virtually impossible. So if you set your action oriented goal to write a thousand pieces of copy for mock clients by the end of 2024, 
the odds of you being at 2000, 5000 or even $10,000 a month by the end of the year are actually realistic. And that is the power of setting the right action oriented goal. Now, before I show you how you're actually going to come up with a plan to execute on that goal, so that way you can actually achieve it by the end of 2024. Let me quickly show you what your goals should look like in case you chose sales or e commerce for sales. It's pretty much the same. What do you need to succeed with it? Well, you need to sell. And do you have something to sell? Probably not. So what you need to do is find someone that does and offer to sell it for them. And the best way to do that is to find a few people who sell online. It could be stores. It can be coaches who have a course or a high ticket program. Honestly, anyone that sells anything online. And then you contact them and tell them that you're going to reach out to every single person that started the checkout process on their stores or on their course. And you're going to have a chat with them to see if they had any questions or what was the reason that they didn't buy and then answer those questions and get them to finish the checkout process. And you're going to offer to do that completely free. All they need to do is just pay you a commission on whatever amount that you recover. This is a no brainer offer because you're helping them recover lost revenue and there's literally zero risk for them because they only pay for the sales that you recover, which would be sales that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And you can easily make a few thousand dollars a month simply by doing that. So with that, you can say that the amount of money that you make is directly related to the number of cart abandonment messages that you send. So in this case, your action oriented goal should be something along the lines of send 10,000 cart abandonment messages by the end of 2024. Now, let's say from those 10,000 messages, you manage to get 5% of them to finish the checkout process for the very product that they already wanted and have already started the checkout process with on their own. And by the way, at 5%, you're going to be doing a terrible job here. But still at 5%, if you get a 20% commission for each sale that you recover, that would equate to $10,000 already from just sending simple text messages. Just so you understand, that's about 55 messages a day that you need to send. And by the way, just so you have context, the average adult in their 20s today sends around 128 messages a day. So you are already sending double that amount on a daily basis. So do you see how easy it is to understand what you need to do when you break down your goals like this? Now, the same applies for e-commerce. All you need to do here is to repost videos from viral products, videos which have already gotten millions and millions of views. So they're proven to work. Now, I'm going to tell you where to find those videos in a second. But if you post 20 videos a day and keep in mind, you don't need to edit any of those videos. You just need to find them on other TikTok accounts, download them and republish them on your page. If you post 20 of those videos a day, which have already gotten millions of views before doing that consistently every day for the next six months, that would be in total around 3,600 videos that you post. What do you think the likelihood of just a few of them popping off? Very likely. Now, let's say that 1% of those videos do pop off again, very bad number, but let's be conservative with our examples here. That would be 36 videos. If those 36 videos get 100,000 views each, which is not much at all for TikTok. That would be about 3.6 million people watching your product videos. And if only 0.1% of them, not even 1%, let's just say 0.1% of them like your product from the video and decide to buy, well, then that's 3,600 orders on your store. And at $50 per order, that's about $180,000 in revenue. And let's say even if you have terrible margins at 30%, that's still $54,000 of pure profit in your pocket. Not bad at all for reposting a few short videos. So with that, you can say that the amount of money you make with this skill is directly related to the number of videos that you post. In this case, your action oriented goals should be something along the lines of post 3,600 viral product videos by the end of 2024. Now, step number five is create an execution plan for these goals. You now have a goal. And in order for you to accomplish this goal, you need a plan, an execution plan. And just like with fitness, if your action oriented goals are to complete 220 weightlifting sessions in a year or to have 250 days where you eat more than 3000 calories, well, then in that case, you're going to need a trainer to put together a training protocol for those 220 weightlifting sessions. And in there detailing what exercise you're going to do in which order with how many reps, sets and weights as well as schedule rest days and deload periods. And then you're going to want a nutritionist to put together a meal plan for you to eat those 3000 calories. So that way, you know exactly what to eat when and in what quantities, meaning you need a plan to accomplish your goals. And honestly, this is where 90% of people fail because they just wing it with their plan. They try to come up with a plan themselves, watching a few YouTube videos on how to count calories, and then they build a meal plan and training protocol on their own. So that way they end up with a shitty plan. That's basically setting themselves up for failure. They lost the battle before they even got to the battlefield. It is simply flat out dumb. So you have to make sure you don't follow the same trap and make this one big mistake when developing your plan. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So what you need to do now is if you're moving forward with copywriting, put together a plan on how you're going to write a thousand pieces of copy for malt clients by the end of 2024. If you're moving forward with sales, 
put together a plan on how you're going to send a thousand cart abandonment messages by the end of 2024. And if you're moving forward with e-commerce, put together a plan on how to post 3,600 viral product videos by the end of 2024. Because this way, you're going to know exactly what you want to achieve, what you need to do to achieve that result and how you're going to do it. Now, just like in the fitness example, you have two approaches you can take to get that plan put together. The first one is to do it yourself. Again, it is a valid option if there's nothing else you can afford to do. But you have to remember that putting together a business plan is inevitably more complex than figuring out how you're going to eat 3000 calories in a day. So if you want to resort to YouTube videos to teach you how to do that, I mean, listen, it's better than nothing, but it most likely hasn't taken you anywhere so far. So really keep that in mind when you go for this approach and know that your likelihood of failure is much higher here. Your second option is to get a professional to develop this plan for you. Again, just like in the fitness example, the ideal scenario is to get a nutritionist and a personal trainer to come up with a plan for you. The problem is it's much harder and more expensive to hire a professional copywriter or an e-com store owner to create a personalized plan for you because they already make shit tons of money and their time is extremely expensive. But I was sick and tired of seeing my audience fail year after year because you guys keep trying to figure everything out on your own without a proper plan to follow in order to accomplish your goals. And that is why I decided to pay for these very, very, very expensive experts myself. I literally paid for my own pocket for the top three experts in all three of those industries, copywriting, sales and e-commerce to develop a step-by-step -step plan on how to execute on the goals that we've just set together. I then got them to record an entire course going over that plan and not only telling you exactly what you need to do in each stage of the plan, but actually showing you how to do it in practice. It's like having a personal trainer with you, telling you which exercises to do with how many reps, sets, weight, and even showing you how to execute each exercise in practice. It cost me six and even multiple six figures to put together each one of these courses, breaking down each one of these plans. That's how much I paid upfront in speaking fees to get these plans put together. And today, I wanna give these plans to you, specifically for those who watched the entire Agency Accelerator Week that I just hosted recently, and you couldn't join the program because you didn't have the money. Now for copywriting, you're gonna get the Penta Profit program from my own CMO, Luis Berger. There, you're gonna learn how to write emails, ads, and sales copy that clients pay thousands of dollars for. All of it using AI and proven fill-in-the-blank copywriting structures that Luis will share with you. For sales, you're gonna get the six-figure sales rep program from my old sales manager, Paul Daly. Here, you're gonna learn how to get good at sales in record time, so that way you can make your first thousand dollars as an appointment setter or online sales rep. For e-commerce, we just finished recording a brand new program from my good friend, Jordan Welch. Inside of it, he teaches you how to put together a Shopify store from scratch and optimize the right details to ensure you get as many sales as possible. And then he's going to show you exactly how to get your first thousand dollars in sales organically. You're literally going to see him live building a store from scratch and getting sales from it during the program. And with this, achieving the goals you set today with any of these skills stops becoming a matter of luck and becomes a matter of just following the steps laid down in each program. Now, how can you access all of this? Well, there's two options. You can either get lifetime access to each one of these programs, just like you get to Agency Accelerator. Now, each one of these programs sells separately for $1,500. But a few months ago, I've also launched a new option that I've been experimenting with, which is to subscribe to Digital Launchpad, my online education platform, because inside of it, you get access to all of those courses, plus other courses on trading, men's fashion, being a digital nomad, and much, much more. And all of this for only $270 a year. And here's the deal. I know that what most of you want is to be able to get enough funds to join my recently launched program, Agency Accelerator. Agency Accelerator is where I personally teach. It is the most bulletproof system that I have ever seen to consistently make 10K a month. Now, when I reopen enrollments to Agency Accelerator, its price will be $1,995, the full price. But if you get a digital launchpad subscription today, I'm gonna lock in your access to Agency Accelerator at only $995. So that way, when you make your first thousand dollars with the courses inside of Digital Launchpad and all of the money-making methods, you can join Agency Accelerator at the same launch discount that I offered you a few weeks ago, instead of having to pay the full price of nearly $2,000. And you'll also have your spot saved inside Agency Accelerator to join at any time. Because right now, even if you wanna pay $2,000, you can't join Agency Accelerator. I closed enrollments. But when you join Digital Launchpad, you'll have the ability to upgrade at any time. 
Now, at the beginning of the video, we talked about lost opportunities. So now it's time to decide if this is going to be another one of those opportunities where you look back in a year and you think, I wonder what would have happened if I had taken a shot at that opportunity, or if you're actually going to figure it out in practice. Now, obviously, I can't do this for everyone or for long. So here is the invitation for you to seize this opportunity while it's still available. Click the button below this video and you're going to be directed to the secure checkout process by Stripe, one of the world's largest payment processors. And there you just need to enter your payment details and complete your registration. And as soon as as you finish your registration, you're going to receive an email like this one with your login confirmation. And from there, you'll be taken to our private member platform where you're going to have access to all the courses inside Digital Launchpad. And once again, this is for everyone who couldn't afford an agency accelerator and you don't want to keep missing the opportunities that pop up in front of you because you currently lack the resources to take up such opportunities. And by the way, we also have the option for $37 a month, but you don't get as many perks as you do with the King yearly plan. And also you don't get the 40% discount. So ladies and gentlemen, if you wanted to join agency accelerator, but you can't, here's your ability to come in, make your first thousand dollars. The whole point of digital launchpad is to make your first thousand dollars. We're not trying to say you're going to become a millionaire or make 10 K a month, even though some people actually do do that inside the program. What I did in that program is I gave you all the best educators to come together and show you the best ways to make your first thousand dollars online. So if you want access to that, click the button below and whatever you spend with digital launchpad will be used as credit when you eventually join the agency accelerator. So on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.